to have a look at energy usage. So if we select on this one down here, where it says report, and then we're going to go here onto the energy usage. And in this example here, we're going to pick on Max's house. And we're going to have a look for the last year. And it brings through the energy and the price. So that's quite helpful. And here you can see a breakdown here by price. So you can see here we spent £173 for the hot water and £338 for the heating for the year. And then this graph here showing me what's going on as far as energy consumed, so how much we're paying for it as well. And then we can see energy delivered. I've got a little blue line there, I'm just going to highlight it so you can see just the blue line by itself. And that's showing me my coefficient performance. So you can see here we're ranging between two and up to three. Uh, it's to do with Max's system here, he's using radiators and he's running at quite a high flow temperature for this example, just to help my figures. Um, if I want to, I can bring on just say the heating there. So we can see throughout the year when he's actually using the heating. And we can also bring in the hot water as well. I'm going to drop off the heating again just to help me clarify what I'm about to talk about. Now, have a look there, that coefficient of performance. You see it's getting a bit of a drop off in the middle of summer. And that's because the system is only doing hot water in the middle of summer. And it's trying to achieve those higher flow temperatures, not the lower temperatures. And therefore it's affecting the efficiency. But obviously you can see they weren't doing anywhere near as much work in the middle of summer as well. What I'd be looking for, I'd be looking for an average of around about 2.6, really, as far as um, efficiency goes. The, the better, the, the higher, the better. Um, so things we could be looking at here, should we work at a slightly lower cylinder temperature? Maybe a bit of a discussion, because obviously hot water seems to be quite high usage there. But that might be a discussion to have with them. Maybe a possibility of being able to reduce the flow temperatures, but we can go into that by looking at how the system's operating and how fast it's achieving temperatures. I'll say it's just a way of having a look at that energy being used, consumed, and a way of breaking it all down. Using Mail Cloud and looking at temperature report history. So I'll click on report at the bottom. Top option there where it says temperature history. And we're going to pick on Max's house. And we're going to say just for the last 24 hours. You see that red line at the top there? That's showing me what the actual cylinder temperature is. So we can see how it's being used in the evening and how fast it's getting itself back up to temperature. But we can also see where the cylinder is losing temperature quite rapidly. And so I know for well from Max's house that this is actually a third party cylinder. So I'll have a little chat with him about maybe insulating that cylinder better. If we have a look at the actual room temperature there, so you can see the room temperature and the actual set temperature marry up quite nicely with each other. Maybe to the point where we could even have a chat about reducing down the flow temperature and be able to improve that coefficient of performance, so thereby improving the efficiency. But at least it starts that conversation.